Hmm, Carl calls. Let's see what he is up to. Hey, Sebastian, I'm ready. I can translate your latest video. Carl, nice to hear you again. Sebastian, before we start this ridiculous adventure, I have a great idea. Let me put it this way. What does Seville tell you? Las Miranda de Sevilla? Sebastian, this is serious. I mean the city, the city of Seville. What does that tell you? Hmm, this is where the Via de la Plata begins. I realize we understand each other. And now let me start, but you take over a few sections too. I hope you like it. Let's just dive into it. <laughs> Let's get going. Okay. Then Camino. Good morning, guys. Look, this is my breakfast today. I don't eat that much here. I have to say, I only really eat once a day. Don't imitate. You need to eat more often. Here we go again. I just want to show you my room. That's where Mike was. Mike is long gone again. And it's pretty cold outside. Wow, it's probably only zero degrees. It's really cold. I'm already freezing. I'll have to put on thick clothes. Today we're going to San Martin. That's what it's called, I think. About 25 kilometers. That's just over 15 miles. Good morning, fellow pilgrims, on day 20 of the Camino Frances. As I set off, I can hardly see any traces of yesterday's celebrations, but I find some within me, and when I follow them, I sense that something has changed. Something is different since yesterday, and I'm a little embarrassed to admit it because it sounds like a cliché, but what has changed is hard to put into words. No matter what formulations I find, they only half express what I feel everything is condensed. The yellow arrows here in this city of 120,000 provide really good orientation. And yet I still get lost at some point, but we'll keep that between us, okay? At some point I see a pilgrim in front of me and I just follow her at a distance. That's the secret. You pass on the responsibility and if you get lost, you can blame someone else. <laughs> Sounds like a career recipe. Well, for some dubious characters for sure but not for me. On the way out of town, I want to grab a few snacks at the supermarket and am involuntarily confronted with my fussy German way of life. It says outside, open from 8 null a.m. Yes, come tempore, or what? The door is closed. At 8.15, a supermarket employee comes out, apologizes profusely, but admits that the bananas have not yet been restocked. As soon as the last banana is in its place, the electronic gates open. Once I've finished my shopping relatively quickly, I pay for my purchase with a 10 euro bill. 
which leads to the next bout of despair. Don't you have any change? The cashier yells at me. I grin and think to myself, all is still right with the world here. But still, unfortunately, no. No change in my pocket. Oh, look. Sebastian was just about to record a video when he sees the two Germans he's met several times before. Yes, they've already done a few Caminos and were able to give me some valuable tips. Let's hear what they have to say. How many times have they walked the Camino? Five times? Wow, that's impressive. But we all know by now that it's addictive. The two of them say, once you've arrived in Santiago, you just want to keep going. Sebastian says that he's been on a different wavelength since yesterday and is probably saying that he's already feeling a bit of a pilgrimage addiction. LOL, if he overdoes it, he should take CBD oil. That's just an advice from me. They both say we're getting the two today, huh? What is the two? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, with the number of kilometers. That's right. So far, we were in the 300 range. Today, it should say 297 kilometers somewhere. That changes everything, of course. Even I get warm feelings in cold Britain and think to myself, hey, my friends don't have to hike that far anymore. The two Germans haven't set themselves a fixed destination for today. Now they have to keep going. Tell them to say hello to Mike. Say hello to Mike. He's probably already at his destination and enjoying a glass of vino. Sebastian, you have to walk faster sometimes. Don't always make all those videos. Just walk. Sebastian is always a bit slow. He stands more. He's more of a standing pilgrim. Now he's standing there again, chewing his bread. Look at him. While others are simply making a pilgrimage, he's chatting to the camera. Today he has to go to San Martin. That's 25 kilometers, and if I'm being generous, he's only managed five of them. He also got lost in Lyon. Now he's dawdling around again. What will become of him? He's optimistic that he'll arrive at 3 p.m. He really is always very optimistic. He still has to do the laundry too, so yes. I admit I find that impressive. He's done the physical part, he's done the mental part. Now the spiritual part is slowly beginning. The mental carousel is behind him. Now it's as if someone has pressed a button. Something is different today, even if it can hardly be put into words. So far it has been very flat and soon it will be more mountainous again. That makes me think, but somehow he's also looking forward to it. What can I say? Stay positive even in the face of uncertainty. Oh, Sebastian then tells another anecdote. He met an Englishman and talked to him for a while. At some point, the Englishman said that Sebastian must be from California. At least that's what his accent suggested. That's praise, of course. When he articulates words in front of me, they come through to me and I can usually make out what Sebastian is trying to tell me. I have to tell you a story that makes me laugh. I can think of something that happened at the beginning of the trip. Sebastian told us that he likes to snorkel at night and hopefully we wouldn't let that bother us. We looked at each other, shrugged our shoulders and said, Sebastian, whatever fetish you want to live out, it's your life, your pleasure. We're okay with that. Only later did it come out what he actually wanted to say. He didn't mean that he snorkels at night, but that he might snore at night. Mike told me that Sebastian had ordered jellyfish in a restaurant. He thought that was the word for squid. Hmm, maybe he just has extravagant tastes. I don't know what they normally eat in Germany. In any case, the waiter reacted confidently and said that jellyfish wasn't available at the moment due to high demand. But seriously, Sebastian usually expresses himself well and knows what he wants to say. So, I think he knows.
Now the personal, the philosophical part begins. Maybe I'll let Sebastian express that in his own words. Today I was thinking about the issue of guilt, and that sometimes you struggle with your past. There are people who say, I can't change that, so I'll just accept it. That always sounds a bit like resignation to me. Today, the thought crystallized. You don't have to change your past. It's not necessary. You are a little sinner, just like all of us. You're in good company. You don't have to change your past. That liberated me a little. I could make a little peace with myself and look to the future without fear, hate, anger, sadness, and resignation. All these feelings that had been running through my head over the last few days and weeks receded into the background and I felt free. And fittingly, a truck drove backwards along a road in front of me. It was in front of me and it was driving backwards the whole time, as if I was pushing it away from me, a big one. It was as if I was pushing this truck away from me. But of course, it was reversing on purpose because it wanted to park somewhere. But it drove backwards for a surprisingly long time and symbolized for me this melancholy that I no longer have to carry, perhaps. These heavy thoughts that normally head in my direction. But today they drove away from me, flowed away from me. So he takes a little break and disregards my advice. He's drinking a Coke. He shouldn't be doing that. But he was in the smallest supermarket in the world, which had virtually no goods, just a Coke in a fridge. The market consisted only of a plastic tarpaulin and a few plastic chairs. Hey, Sebastian, are you sure you didn't just stumble into someone's private apartment? Well, the main thing is that there was a cold drink for you. He can treat himself to that. He seems to be doing quite well. His feet don't hurt, they're fine. His leg is fine too. It has gotten warmer, so he has taken off his jacket. And you know what, do you see that? You see that back there? That's a little teaser of what's to come. Mountains, mountains. Oh, yeah. You can tell. It feels different. It feels different when you know there's a two in front. Look here. 294 kilometers. That's about 183 miles. There is no two in front of the other numbers. Crazy. Sebastian is already starting to babble. He's so euphoric. Then, he was in San Martin, but his children called him from home. They have fallen ill due to the season. He had little choice but to wish them a speedy recovery and to convey something very, very unusual at their age. The get well wishes of someone neither they nor I or he would have met under normal circumstances. That's pretty much true for all the people here on the trail. That's what makes it so special. Somehow I think that's exactly what should give us all hope for the continuation of humanity. By the way, I would like to take this opportunity to say that I also wished them a speedy recovery. Did I speak German? I can't remember. But if I did it, dann war es gut. Ja, 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 das war es. Ich bin mir sicher. 
We want to wish you a speedy recovery. I hope you feel better Mike? soon. That, I, I hold it. Hey, good to pet the run. Get well soon. Get, yeah. get well soon. I'll give you a hug. Did Mike just speak German? It is simply unbelievable what this way reveals. The evening dawns. Sebastian always makes his recap video in the evening. That makes a lot of sense because he has of course already spoken a lot and tasted a bit of non-alcoholic wine. No, seriously, he has one in his tea. Trust me, which means his voice is smoky like well-cured bacon. But the circumstances don't matter at all and are eclipsed by what he's about to say. You don't have to change your past, period. I agree, simply because it's physically not possible. Oh man, I would have been happy if I could have continued hiking with you, but that's the way it is. I have a vague feeling that I will see some members of my Camino family again. Sebastian's route today was mainly along a main road, which was interspersed with some very beautiful sections. He could already see the mountains and feel what they would do to his feet. At the moment, my friends are used to the flatlands, but the weaning is coming. Definitely. How will they react? Everyone is fine, but this may just be the deep breath before the storm. The road before Santiago de Compostela will be exhausting again, but somehow Sebastian also feels a sense of anticipation. And that is like a metaphorical extract of today's spiritual message. There are times in life when you're doing well and everything has settled down, but where everything has also become monotonous. But then suddenly, things really take off. Suddenly a wild ride starts. Then you're faced with real challenges and you don't know exactly how you're going to handle them. You have no idea at all and you just keep going. Then you move on. So hopefully you can manage that. My friends haven't taken a break yet. They'll probably do the whole Camino Francais in 30 days. That's the plan. Sebastian feels completely normal at the moment. He has normal feet with normal toes, with noteworthy, normal toenails. Okay, that sounds really strange, I guess. But pain-free feet are a gift. You realize that here. There are two feet. These feet have toes. And that just has to be mentioned and not explained. Feet, toes, freedom from pain, the three F. Today, the path has crystallized a thought. We are allowed to come to terms with our past. We can regret something but we can simply let this regret happen and move on. Regret also ends. What happened happened and could not have been any different. And even if it had been different, that is good too. You don't have to invent a time machine to change the past. People who say they would do it all over again exactly the way they did it are probably blessed, but I don't think that applies to most of us. And what Sebastian was given today was the thought, you don't have to change your past. You don't have to. You can try, but you don't have to. Let go, let go, let go. There were also many conversations today with an Englishman, a Danish woman, and many others. From the Danish woman, he learned a lot about how hiking influences the nerve system of the body, what explains a lot. You should hike if you want to feel free. The path is rich. You reach to the side and suddenly you have a colorful bouquet of impressions in your hand. Today was influenced by the procession yesterday. This procession has shaped the way for days to come. Sebastian has spoken to many Christians and most of them have turned away from God and walk this path to find the way to God again or to leave this question open. They expect nothing. Thank you very much for watching. Let's slowly get to the end. If you like what you see, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. See you on the road tomorrow. To Astoga. 21 dann schon. Heute war Tag 20 und der geht jetzt zu Ende. Tschüss.